The Javelina's baseball team made history over the weekend, clinching the program's first appearance in the Division II World Series. The South Central Region champs were welcomed home tonight in Kingsville after traveling home from Canyon, Texas, where they won the hardware. A good amount of Javelina fans were lined up outside McCulley Hall. Then took the celebration indoors, where Coach Jason Gonzalez talked about not only the history the program has already made, but the history it's still hoping to achieve. I don't know if it's once in a lifetime, I sure hope not. Um, it's not done yet. We still um, have another week of preparation. We're going to go down to North Carolina and take care of business. And, um, you know, all of us, every single one of my teammates, and we think we're going to win this thing. But please know this, when we get on that bus on Thursday to go to North Carolina, we're going to represent you guys, Havelina Nation, this university, this city, to the best of our ability. And so thank you so very much for being here. Keep pulling for us. We need it. We're not leaving. That's the motto that this history making baseball team says led them to victory at regionals and now has them preparing for the D2 College World Series. That's something no team from this program has ever done before. Dallas, would you, would you just walk me through the, the emotional roller coaster that was the uh, South Central Regional? I uh, only got three words there, Jared. It's, uh, we're not leaving! <laughs> yes, spirits are high in Havelina country. And for Jason Gonzalez, head coach who has come close but never cracked into the College World Series, what seemed impossible is no longer an issue. We, we kind of went over there and said, you know what, somebody's got to win this tournament. Why not us? Why not them? The team that never once tried to cheat the grind and put in the work since the very beginning. It takes a little bit of arrogance. You, you've got to feel really good about what you're doing. But again, for us, this is not like we just played uh, you know, four or five very good games. This started for us in August. There's nothing I can take away from anything. I had the best time of my life last year. I mean, that's, that's the best way I can describe it. They say going on a playoff run's a ride, but I mean, it's true. Definitely an emotional ride. You never think coming in, like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be in the College Road Series one day, and then just to see it all play out and just to be a big part of it and, and everything, it's, it's pretty amazing. It was pretty special, it was fun, it was cool. The expectations are up here this year, man. We had a great year last year, right? I'm gonna hardly talk about last year, because that was in the past. But this is the last time I'm gonna talk about, man. Expectations are here, Our expectations are here. What the team last year did to get there is they started day one, grinding in here, getting that work. Right? It has to be the same right now. Alarm is going off at five o'clock in the morning. And it starts long before anybody ever sees a pitch. And so there's many, many hours uh, spent in the fall from a physical standpoint. I don't think I'll remember a day where I woke up and I was like, thank God we have workouts today, you know? I can't even go into how much blood, sweat, and tears we put into that offseason. We're definitely out to dominate. Um, uh, I think we've made our name for ourselves already where it's to a point where there's fear. From the moment we get there to the moment we leave, nobody's happy we're there, nobody's happy that they have to show up in Kingsville. And it's going to continue to be that way. We're creating a reputation for the long run.
Man, it was crazy. I was actually in the hole, so I was standing right there by the like you know the entrance to the dugout to go on the field. So I saw it happen, and I really didn't think it hit him in the face. I thought it got his his uh, his mask, you know. And uh, when he got up, I was like, wow, he's he just ate that. I mean, everyone wanted to charge him out. Of course, I mean, you want to get the guy back, but you just got to keep fighting and try and win the game for him. I mean, he's a big part of he was a big part of our team because he was here for four years. He's our catcher, he's our, I mean, main guy. I was actually on second base when he got hit in the face, so I saw it really, really clear, and I thought that he was, I, I knew he was gonna get hit because I was like, oh, he's gonna wear this pitch and he's gonna get on base and we're gonna start this rally. But once I realized that that pitch was going straight for his face and he wasn't moving, I was like, really nervous for him and I saw it all from second base and I, I remember I took off running for home plate and I was like oh no and then I had to turn around and go back because I remember I was on base and I was like I can't go up there I have to stay here but uh, you know he came through and we, we as a team came through for him you know and we all went to the hospital and showed support with him and stayed behind him and you know was with him whenever he came back and was trying to get back to where his old self and uh, it was just, it showed a lot about, you know, how we are as a program. I mean, it was another thing that brought our team together because there were so many guys there that people were standing outside of his room just because there wasn't enough room in there. And uh, it definitely brought our guys together. And that was a big weekend against Angelo too that it happened. And then we came back the next day and took care of business. And uh, it was what Christian wanted and, and we came through for him. I mean, obviously going through getting hit in the face and stuff like that and being able to come back, it, it put a lot of things into perspective for me. Um, it goes back to kind of what we said about the pack. I mean, it's a lot more than baseball. And so uh, the baseball part of it is obviously huge. That's how we get close. And uh, But it, it goes way beyond that. And so it, it meant the world to me. Uh, you know, I wasn't really thinking about baseball at that point in the hospital and all those guys coming to see me, not knowing you know, what really was going to happen at that point, but just being there for a brother, you know, it, it, it meant the world to me. Good evening, we are now joined by the Texas A&M Kingsville Javelinas. Uh, first of all, you know, you, you have to congratulate Colorado Mines for uh, playing a tough game. Uh, you know, they, they did what they had to do in an extra inning ball game. As a visiting team, that's not always easy to do, and so they did it. Emotional, after this game, and having to play tomorrow, how do you talk to the team and kind of get them back up to get ready to play tomorrow? Well, uh, we don't have any uh, time to feel sorry for ourselves. You know, we, we've been through this as a program. We've, we've come come back through the uh, loser's bracket. And then, Cole, you being a leader on the team, what are you kind of telling the guys, player to player, uh, as you kind of get this ready for tomorrow? Uh, I mean, honestly, I don't really tell them any things. Our team knows what we need to do. We know we need to bounce back. And this team's definitely built for it, so. The pack mentality is what we lived by, every, all of us. We took it and ran with it all year. Nothing comes before the pack. Nothing, nothing at all. Uh, everyone's there for one another. Like we can trust our brothers, without a doubt. Knowing at this point that the, the road to the College World Series is gonna be once again another matchup with West Texas a and do you guys feel like you know most of their tricks and what's going up for that game? Uh, we, we, we know each other very well. They know us just as well as we know them. There won't be any uh, surprises, there won't be any secrets. Uh, very good, t uh, tough team playing at home, so. Again, our backs are against the wall playing uh, the host team on their on their home field, uh, but they're in the same situation we are. So they're coming off a tough loss as well, and um, so we'll see what happens. Here you go, our right-hander against the righty Gonzalez. Comes set at the letters. First pitch, runner goes. Pitch is outside for a ball under the second base. It's not in time. It carries into center field. Ingram up and heading to third. Throw in from Bodie Bryant over the head of the third baseman. Ingram coming to the plate will score!
Austin Ingraham on a stolen base and two errors comes around to score the winning run in the bottom of the 10th inning for the Javelinas. And now it's just about the wildest finish you could imagine. The Javelinas walk it off against West Texas. I knew Austin was gonna get to second no matter what. And whenever he got to second, I told myself, you gotta bring him in. You gotta walk it off. Ingraham is a monster, man, what can I say? He made it happen for us. You know, we needed that spark and he, he provided it. That's what it looks like when a guy goes into something with no fear of failure, none whatsoever. Austin takes that base knowing that he's got the base stolen. He's not getting thrown out. He sees the ball go away and knows, I've got an opportunity to really give us a chance to win this ball game. I take the risk and go. And uh, obviously the ball sails over third base and he's not even looking at me. I'm, I'm looking at him, telling him to go. He's not, he's not looking at me. That moment we were pretty much meant to, to win the whole thing because there's no way that in a million years that would happen again. We didn't stop until that, until that last pitch, you know. We were zoned in the whole time. We, we were in control and, you know, like I said, once we walked off and we, and we broke their hearts, it felt great because, you know, we, they needed it. We are now joined by the Texas A&M Javelinas that defeated West Texas A&M 2-1 to one in an 11th inning thriller. Now, uh, Austin, when you got on base start two with two S in the 10th inning, how were you reminded immediately at some point in time this at bat, I'm going to try and steal second base? Was that your game plan as soon as you got on, got on the back? Oh, uh, well, as soon as they um, changed the pitcher, you know, Coach Gonzo came up to me and said, hey, we're looking to steal first pitch, you know. Um, Alex Gonzalez is going to give us a fake bunt. We want you on second. In a situation like that, you just need a guy in scoring position because any base hit can do the job. And you know, good things happen when, when you execute. Was there any hesitation? You know, a couple of fourth inning, fifth inning, you had a couple of guys thrown out at home. Was there any hesitation to send him? Not at all. Not at all. One thing we preach is, is play with your hair on fire. Yeah. Um, opportunities we knew were going to be be very limited, and so we're going to roll the dice. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, but the only time I'm going to get upset is if we don't play aggressive. And so when I saw him coming around third, I knew he wouldn't stop. Talking about how with no men out and three men on, there's most likely a good chance you might give up one, maybe two runs, but that is not the end of the world here in this situation. And so for wanting his team to be sharp, be locked in here early in this situation. Dallas Stefano. When it's lofted into left field, that's hit pretty well. Going back as cars the track at the wall. Dallas Stefano has done it again. We could not have gotten off to a better start. Dallas gets a big hit. In a championship game like that, that's huge. I had so much confidence just from the games before that series and uh, I just was ready to put the ball in play and the first thing I saw I just uh, took a hack at it. Lee May is, is, is cruising through, through five innings. We realize that he's got his good stuff. I was excited to be honest. Sounds a little cliche but I really treated it like any other game. You can't overthink it. Just go out there and do everything you've done the whole year and not change a thing. You know, at some point in time, though, Colorado Mesa is a very good team, a very proud team. They weren't just going to lay down. They were going to make a push. Uh, Lee May had a blister on his hand. It kind of opened up a little bit on his finger. Couldn't make some pitches. They scored a few runs. We come back in, and I think we put up four right after they put up three. At that point in time, I knew that the game was over. Colorado Mesa knew they couldn't hold us down. We knew they couldn't hold us down. No matter who they brought in, they weren't holding us down. I knew what I had in the bullpen. I had three or four guys down there. Yeah, you, you could feel it in the dugout. You could feel that, you know, hey, this is this is happening. You start counting outs at that point in time. Outs outs are the uh, um, are the are the currency that you're you're dealing with. Savanich first offering. Ground ball right side double play ball for Olman. Feeds Gonzalez for one on the first base for the double play. And with that, the Texas A&M Kingsville Javelinas have clinched their first ever berth in the College World Series, a dog pile just in front of the pitcher's mound. Honestly, I think I was at the pitcher's mound before Pablo caught it at first base, so I'm glad that they called him out. Well, I was just hoping I hit him in the chest. <laughs> it's like, make sure don't, just to get the out. If I didn't get that out, everyone would be pissed at me. You 
You knew he had it, or you were like, don't screw this up, bro? I mean, he better should. He better have had it. He knew I was coming at him. I think there was a lot of places here where he said, you know, I knew you were going to come at me if I didn't get that one. I couldn't stop smiling because the umpire um, asked me to show him the ball because he didn't think I had it in my glove. And I was showing him the ball, and as I'm running to the mound, I'm thinking, wow, we did it. As soon as it was hit, I didn't even have to turn around. I remember that specifically. I didn't have to because it was tailor-made, and I know Cole and Alex up the middles probably the best we've ever played with. As soon as he turned it, I was like, that's it. And I mean, we just ran out. And I mean, there's there's many guys that never been able to dogpile. Whenever he hit it, I was just thinking, just let me get one out. Let me get the first out, and then we'll deal from it from there. But no, I definitely uh, blacked out on that one. Once I let go of the ball to Alex, I don't remember anything that happened until I was at the bottom of the dogpile. say last summer that it's only impossible until somebody does it. For some reason the good Lord has blessed me beyond my imagination, blessed me with a group of young men that I couldn't be more proud of and I said last night I didn't care how it was going to end. I couldn't be more proud of them. I just want to thank my teammates because they're the best group of guys I've ever been around and their character is unbelievable man. Kyle you've been here for four years now and your injury earlier in the season coming back from that what is that trophy? Oh man, uh, I think Coach B will tell you. I mean, when uh, when I was in the hospital about a month ago, I didn't think I was going to be back on the field, and you know, it puts a lot of things into perspective. And um, you know, it's more than more than a game; it really is. Got the dog ball field. Oh, it was great, man. Hopefully, we got one more in us. The Texas A&M Kingsville baseball team, this is pretty good. They're heading to the College World Series. Now they are really talented, but they're really fun as well. Now this baseball team will take tomorrow off, but then they'll be back on the practice field on Wednesday. The D2 College World Series is set for May 26 in Cary, North Carolina. Hashtag back the pack. <laughs> After we took that first loss, it was just, it was sad on us because we know we could do better. And uh, we didn't play our best that game. You know, it was the first game of our World Series run, so you, we were all a little antsy and a little nervous and what to do and stuff. So we, we probably played a little, little tighter than we should have. And everybody that we talked to said, you've got to go win game one. You've got to sell out everything that you have to go win the first game in the World Series because it's going to set you up. Uh, to make some easier decisions down the road. One thing I could say about our team, like I've said before, is we never lose hope. We never lost hope. We knew we knew we were never out of the fight. At the same time, it was kind of like, well, we don't want to go home. And we just got here. Uh, like there's an, and our, our whole motto all season was we're not leaving. And so we were just kind of like, well, we just got here. We don't want to go home. So we we got to win this game or we're going home. I think we were. We were more like, hey, we, we got here. We can play with these teams, and there's a reason we're here.
played Javelina baseball. Just how we know how. You know, we're playing against some of the best teams in the nation, and, and we're out there just doing our thing, you know, playing pack baseball. Good evening, everybody. The Javelinas baseball team looking to keep its season alive in an elimination game in a game that was going on earlier at the Division II World Series. Mercyhurst Lakers freshman Tyler Flores on the mound, getting the strikeout, swinging, and the freshman in early trouble in the first runners at the corners. Doesn't matter. Flores with the strikeout. He had eight and six shutout innings of work. I knew we were playing in an elimination game, and I did not want to get sent home yet. Texas A&M Kingsville, we have with us head coach Jason Gonzalez and catcher Christian Cottle. Uh, the first thing you have to do is congratulate Florida Southern. Uh, very good team, <laughs> tremendous program. Uh, hats off to their guy. He threw extremely well today. Uh, we knew that, that they were a very good team. We knew we had to play really good baseball to be in the game. Uh, and unfortunately, it just wasn't our day today. Christian, obviously as a senior, comes to an end. Right. How, how would you like to look back on all of this? Uh, this is this has been an unbelievable ride. Um, I, I would have never seen this, you know, graduating from high school, um, being able to come and do this my senior year and get to the World Series for the first time and um, get our first win in the World Series. Uh, it, it's extremely, extremely humbling. And those guys I played with, I love more more than anything in the world. They're truly brothers to me, and uh, the coaches here. To, uh, truly family. So uh, I, I'm nothing but thankful, and this has been a wonderful, wonderful season. I remember I was really upset. I mean, we all wanted to win the World Series, obviously, and it didn't work out as we thought it was going to, but we definitely, definitely had an amazing year. Definitely won't ever forget it, and we'll remember, cherish that moment for the rest of my life. Such an awesome run. It was something I'll never forget. It's something that we still talk about. Like as a team, just how much fun it was and how crazy it was. I wouldn't change anything. We had a blast. It was it was a great season, first time in school history. I mean, of course, I would change the ending, winning the World Series. But I mean, that comes with more hard work and and determination to to get there and not just say that we're going to win it. We got to do it. I think we all know that we'll be back. We're looking to go back this year. So we won't. And of course, it was disappointing to lose, but you know. We're still in it. It was a group of guys that believed in something bigger than themselves, that truly loved each other, uh, would do anything for the guy next to them. They understood uh, what it meant to fight, what it meant to bounce back. A group that truly loved to compete. 
um, would thrive in competition. For a program who has really been you know, solid for a while now, and it's gotten close in regionals before, to finally get over that hump and actually get here, what does that mean for your program now that you've been here for the first time moving forward? Well, you know, we talk every year uh, about trying and attempting to be elite. And that's a very, it's rare company, and it's hard to do to be able to call yourself elite. And I told the team afterwards they did it, they made it. They went toe to toe with the best in the country, and they set some standards that are gonna be extremely hard to follow year in and year out. But future teams will be compared to, did they make it to carry? And that's a great thing for a program. Um, and, I, and I thank them for allowing me to, to make a dream come true. And so, um, yes, we, we've raised some standards. We've, we've, we've knocked on the door a couple of times in the past. Uh, and, and be able to kick it in a little bit this year and get here and experience it, um, tremendous. I know there's not a lot of programs in, uh, in Division One Baseball, Division Two, that can do what we do. I'm, uh, we work harder than pretty much anybody, and I can guarantee it. So uh, when when we showed up, we knew exactly what was going to happen. I'm, uh, it was no surprise to anybody. I'm, uh, were we, you know, impressed? Yeah, you know, our first College World Series berth. That was definitely exciting. Um, uh, but but we knew what we were capable of, um, uh, and to this day, you know, we're still proud of what we did, and we're excited to do it again.